Good morning, everybody. Welcome to our service this morning, the 30th of July, 2023. What a privilege it is to be in your home and to share with you this morning. I pray that you are truly, truly blessed as we share together. <clears throat> our call to worship this morning is taken from Psalm 128. Blessed are all who fear the Lord, who walk in His ways. You will eat the fruit of your labor. Blessings and prosperity will be yours. Your wife will be like a fruitful vine within your house. Your sons will be like olive shoots around your table. Thus is the man blessed who fears the Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Father God, as we gather to worship this morning, it is our privilege, our honor to worship you in reverence and in awe. We give you ourselves a fresh this morning, bright and early. We just say, here we are, Lord, to worship you. So, Lord, thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for salvation through the cross, redemption, freedom from sin through the blood of the Lamb as we cry out for forgiveness. We repent and say, Father, forgive me. Forgive me, Lord. You know my heart. Search me. Find any unclean way and lead me in your paths of righteousness through the blood of the Lamb. That I may know, that we may know that we are forgiven, that we are cleansed and redeemed. But Father, this morning we pray that as you share, as we share in your word and your message, that you just guide us and lead us, that you inspire us and lift us up. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Our passage this morning is Genesis chapter 29 from verse 15 to verse 28. After Jacob had stayed with him for a whole month, Laban said to him, Just because you are a relative of mine, should you work for me for nothing? Tell me what your wages should be. Now Laban had two daughters. The name of the older was Leah, and the name of the younger was Rachel. Leah had weak eyes, but Rachel was lovely in form and beautiful. Jacob was in love with Rachel and said, I will work for you for seven years in return for your younger daughter, Rachel. Laban said, It's better that I give her to you than to some other man. Stay here with me. So Jacob served seven years to get Rachel, but they seemed like only a few days to him because of his love for her. Then Jacob said to Laban, Give me my wife, my time is completed, and I want to lie with her. So Laban brought together all the people of the place and gave a feast. But when the evening came, he took his daughter Leah and gave her to Jacob. And Jacob lay with her, and Laban gave his servant Zilpah to his daughter as her maid servant. When morning came, there was Leah. So Jacob said to Laban, What is this you have done to me? I served you for Rachel, didn't I? Why have you deceived me? Laban replied, It is not our custom here to give the younger daughter in marriage before the older one. Finish this daughter's bridal week, then we will give you the younger one also in return for another seven years of work. Jacob did so. He finished the week with Leah, and then Laban gave him his daughter Rachel to be his wife. Just that far this morning in God's word, and we ask that he bless it to us. Now, when I read a passage like this, sometimes I just don't know where to start. I don't know what to do or where to go. Um, you know, there's so many options in this passage. I mean, keeping your eye on the prize, staying focused, walking away, going the distance, disappointment, setback, skullduggery, deception, the baller, the bride price, the cost of love, waking up next to the wrong person. <clears throat> yeah. Where is God and his plan now? Con, scam, deceived. What a waste of time. Love conquers all. Time flies when you're having fun. Payback is a, I'll leave that to you. The list can go on and on and on. 
I mean, really, it's a fascinating story. It would make a great movie. Think about it. A complicated main character, a person who tricks the trickster, a love story, and a surprise on the wedding night. Family intrigue and bitter rivalry. But underlying all this, though, is the relationship between God and Jacob. God appears to be working on Jacob's flawed humility, transforming him by using his own flaws against him. Remember this, <laughs> Jacob literally means trickster. So he got caught, yeah, in this case, a slim fungsy bass, literally translated, sometimes we too clever for ourselves. Jacob, the deceiver, swindled his brother Esau out of both his, his birthright and his blessing from their father, and now finds himself on the receiving end of a stick, and it's not such a pleasant experience. Whoever is sitting here this morning can relate to the story. Whom of us have been one of the characters in the story? Who's been deceived and who has deceived? What is God saying to you and I today? Where are we in our journey with God? Stagnant? Frustrated? Feeling ignored? Uncertain about what's next? The next chapter, as it were? Running in a race? Running on empty? Fighting the good fight? John Wesley always used to ask, and it was his main theme when it came to small group meetings, how goes it with your soul? You know, yeah, we can get caught up in life and blah, 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 all that stuff, but how goes it with your soul? Can you and I sing today, it is well, it is well with my soul? I don't know. But in case not, allow me to share with you this morning that we need to remember that God always sees the bigger picture, the whole and perfect picture. Earlier this month, I shared in a sermon entitled, There's Always a Bigger Picture. It's on YouTube. If you want to miss it or if you've missed it, you can go and find it. But once again, we see the wondrous working out of God's plan. God's plan not ours. I also want to undergird the message this morning with a couple of scriptures. The first is this, and please, these are not cliche verses. I don't put them out there. God gives them to me as I write the sermon. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. The second is a verse that gives me so much hope in my Christian journey, so much encouragement to keep on going. Philippians 1 verse 6, that says to us, you and I can be confident of this, that he who began again good work in us will carry it on to completion at the coming of Christ Jesus. That picture that there's God's doing stuff all the time in our lives. And the third, <laughs> and this is maybe a bit tug in cheek, um, but yeah, nonetheless, Proverbs 16, verse 9. In their hearts, humans plan their course, but God establishes their steps. I mean, the Bible is full of stories like this. I mean, moments like this, twists and turns and the wonders of life. Example, Joseph sold into slavery. Abraham, I mean, yeah, Moses never saw the promised land. Noah built an ark and it had never rained. Samson, the disciples, Israel, and then there's good old Saul who became Paul. This incredible, incredible journey, you know, that we're on. I mean, I take, for example, my journey. Um, I started as a Methodist um, and I know and I knew without a shadow of doubt that God had called me into the ministry. There was no way I could think of anything. And then things went pear-shaped. Totally, totally pear-shaped. So much so that I walked away from the Methodist Church. Um, it was tough. It was hard. It was brutal. Um, but that's what it was. And in my heart, I knew God said, 
I want you in the church. I want you in the church. And so I resorted to self once again. And I tried to provide myself. I got another for myself and my family. Got another accounting practice going. And the harder I worked on the practice, the more ill I got. It was so bad that in the mornings I'd get up, go out of the house. We had a little room at the back of the house. Um, I used to go, and as soon as I walked into that little place, which I called the office, I started to feel ill. I mean, literally, physically ill. Um, and I just didn't know, and I prayed a lot, and I heard a lot, and I said to God, what is this? And God said to me, I told you you would not do this again. And my response was, Lord, but how am I going to survive? What about my family? And all I got was, I told you, you're not going to do this again. So eventually, I just couldn't take being ill anymore, speaking to my wife, my rock, my my wisdom. Um, I decided to sell what I'd built. Um, <laughs> um, and I got it going again and sold it. Someone bought it instantly. It then opened the place for me to journey with my dad in his final two years of his cancer journey. An amazing time. It got time to restore family, all this sort of stuff. How we lived, I don't know, by God's grace. And then the door opened into the Presbyterian Church. <laughs> and here I sit, um, content and happy and blessed. And amazing. So, yeah, um, twists and turns. Grow us, shape us, mold us. Move us to all sorts of things. Um, are they easy? Definitely not. We may have this picture, but we need to understand that God has a different picture for us. Maybe different, um, but He has a picture for us that is better and more than what we've got and think we can ever get. So, yeah, when these events come our way, these twists and turns, um, how do we cope? How do we journey through it? I'm just going to share a couple of points with you this morning. Maybe they help you. I don't know. Um, but here it is. Firstly, we need to walk with God. I mean, it sounds obvious, but we need to walk with God. Proverbs 3, 5 and 6 tells us, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways submit to Him and He will make your path straight. Secondly, in Jesus' words, Lord, not my will, but your will be done. Thirdly, remember my story. Stick with God's plan. Don't try and make God's plan work your way. We know the rules. <laughs> now we've got a whole book full of them. Obey them. Be obedient. Number four, seek wisdom, godly counsel. Proverbs 11.14 warns us that for lack of guidance, wisdom, counsel, whatever word you want to use there, a nation fails, a person fails, but victory is won through many advisors. James goes one step further, saying that we should ask. He says, if any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to you. Number five. Pay attention to how God has wired you. Be, let's be a bit facetious. If you're a ballerina, God's not going to make you be a rugby player. I mean, it's as simple as that. We have spiritual giftings. God has blessed us with stuff that he wants us to use. So use it. Almost there. Number six. Be still and know. Listen. Pray. Listen to God. Listen to your heart. Psalm 37, verse 4 and 5. Take delight in the Lord. Again, that walking with God. And He will give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust in Him and He will do this. And finally, look at your circumstances. As the wisest man in the world said, <laughs> old Solomon, there's a time and a place for everything. I mean, just look at where you are, understand where you are, and let God work in where you are. 
In conclusion this morning, I want to say God has a plan for each and every one of our lives. Sometimes we might not get it. Sometimes we might not see it. Most times we don't want to see it. Um, but yeah, He has a plan for us. Sometimes it's easy, but generally not so. We atrophy when it's not rough. Eh? When the going gets tough, the tough get going. Yeah. And the road is long. Yeah. And it's winding and it twists and it turns. But we'll get there. Sometimes we just have to stay. Sometimes we just have to pause. Listen. Psalm 46 verse 10. Be still and know that I am God. So pause. Hear. But ultimately as Paul encourages us to do this morning. Do you not know that in a race, all the runners run, but only one gets the prize? Run in such a way as to get the prize. Everyone who completes, competes in the games goes into strict training. They do it to get a crown that will not last. But we do it. We do it for a crown that will last forever. So don't get caught up in the twists and turns of life. Trust God and lean into His understanding. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, thank You. Thank You for the twists and turns in life. Thank You for the meanders of this incredible journey called faith. Thank You for the joy of walking with You. Um, yeah, and Lord, we acknowledge sometimes it's tough. And when it's tough, it's generally because we aren't going where we should go. So, Lord, open our eyes that we may see. Open our ears that we may listen. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for joining us this morning. I pray that you have been blessed, that God has spoken. And if you're in a weird place at the moment and things aren't going your way, maybe you just need to ask God, what am I missing? So be blessed. And I say to us all this morning, now may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all, both now and forevermore. Amen. Go in peace to love God's world. Amen.